Good evening and welcome to The Shack. My name is Barbara Gray from Clarity here in the UK and uh, had a little glitch there. I think the, uh, the internet uh, dropped down, but I would really appreciate it if somebody could just let me know that we've gone live so that we can carry on doodling. Is anybody there apart from me? I know that our friend Grace is in the building with you and I would really love to see some Ah, here we go. Look, I can see some people joining in. There we go. Helen, thank you. Is the sound good? Sound is good. We're back on track. Sorry about that. We've had a really wany, wany day here in the southeast of England. It has been persisting. How are you doing? Hey, everything all right? All working, Grace says. Our darling Grace from New York is in the building with you, keeping you company. Hey, here they come. What else are you going to do on a rainy Thursday night apart from doodle a crown with Barb, eh? Yeah, that's it. That's what we're going to do. I, uh, I had to have a nap this afternoon. Do you know, I was so tired. I think that's what happens when you get older. My mum always said, if you can't have a nap in the afternoon, then it's poor management. <laughs> So I did. And I feel I'm full of beans now, full of beans. I hope that everybody is all right. I hope that you are warm and dry and safe and um, and all set to start doodling our our crown. We did we did well, didn't we, the other day? Um, shall I show you? I I I finished. I, I went ahead, I crashed ahead. So the bus driver got on the bus and had a look. Shall we, shall we have a little look and see where we're at? See what you think? There you go. So I, I, did, my, I did my C and I, and I wanted to get the object. There you go. So the object of this exercise for me was to get a really, really lovely gold, which I really, I'm really I think I hit, I hit the nail on the head. It's like gold paint but it came out really nice. I'm going to show you where I found it. And then, of course, a little bit of um, little bit of shading just to get a bit of dimension. But I thought it'd be nice. And, and the, 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 um, the faux gems, the dot, well, these aren't going to be faux, are they, if they're royal crown? But the, uh, the gemstones, I kind of started but didn't finish it. I thought maybe we could get our crown in place today, get the gold down. And then on Monday, <laughs> this is me playing for time here, then I'll have a chance to, um, to brush up on Sunday on our faux gems, okay? Because I'm going in the office tomorrow, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of boning up. You know, it's been a while, and, and it, I just can't get it right. I don't know. It's, something's not right. So I'm going to sit and watch our old YouTubes that we did and, um, and, and just catch up and do a bit of practicing. And then on Monday, we could just have a session, a lovely session, a recap session on, on doing our gemstones. Hmm? How's that sound? Because I've forgotten, to be honest. I've forgotten how it works. So I thought, well, I tell you what, let's do a crown today. Let's perch it on a C for crown. Isn't it ironic that we would be drawing crowns and all over the news at the moment, poor Charles is Charles C, Cancer C, Crown C. It's like, oh, yeah. So healing energy pouring their way. And, um, and, and so I'm sure that, you know, lots of us, feeling under the weather at the moment you know i know that that uh tina morris's mum she's in the wars at the moment going through it so there's a big shout out a big collective shout out to tina morris's mum because god knows she needs all the positive energy and healing love that we can muster for her um and then jill claire's mum really jill mwah, big love and hugs and kisses to you this too shall pass. You'll be fine. I know, I know it's rough at the moment, but you watch. A week from now, you'll be feeling a lot better than you do now. And your lovely Claire's there giving you a hug. Hey, yeah, it'll be all right. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I just, I'm sending you all my love and love from 
everybody in the shack. All our hands in yours, okay? Yeah. Speedy recovery, people. Anybody who's feeling under the weather, we wish you a very speedy recovery. You know, the, it is, it, the weather's horrible. I heard it's snowing up north. Is that right? Yeah. You know, here it's just raining cats and dogs. You know that building site over the road that I keep bitching about, that I told you they're building those big um, mansions over the road, right? So so Lord Fauntleroy decided to um, sell off his tennis, <laughs> his tennis courts and build these great big houses. Anyway, <laughs> do you remember what I used to say every time it rained? The, the little moat that he had would turn into a pond. <laughs> well, clearly the builders have hit water. <laughs> and if they weren't sure, he, him upstairs has decided. So who knows, by this time next summer, instead of four great big million pound homes, we could have a swimming pool in Crowborough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I could walk across to it. <laughs> They didn't do their due diligence, did they? Because, you know, I mean, the clues in the ducks. There were ducks on that pond last time, on that moat, uh, forgive me. Anyway, I mustn't be mean-spirited. Must be awful for those builders. But all I see is more and more mud coming out of that hole. More and more mud. So either they're building mansions with cellars <laughs> or they just can't get a firm footing. Anyway, where were we? C for crown. <laughs> C for crown. It is like a building site out there. Can you imagine all that mud and then and then days of rain? <laughs> Slip sliding around. <laughs> anyway, come on, Barbara. Nice, nice, nice. Let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at this crown. Okay, quick recap. Okay, <laughs> let's have a quick recap. I'm chuckling about the blokes over the road. Ah, uh, it's not fun, is it? Right, C. C for crown. C for lots of different things. Right. Um, ah, yeah, there you go. We've got the same jumper on. Did Has Grace just sent a, a message that we've got the same jumper on? I know. Isn't that lovely? We bought these at an airport, didn't we, Gracie? I treated us. We love it. Being kind is cool. Ain't that the truth? Has Grace put a, a message up? Look, she sent me this one. There's Grace. Hang on, let me show you. Hey, that's Grace in New York. Being kind is cool. Being kind is cool. Yeah. We may live a long way apart, but we're very close. Right. So first of all, remember, we had this little exercise last time, didn't we? And what we've got to do. So we traced out this, the crown and then we dropped the C in afterwards. So I thought, right, what we'll do is because obviously I've completed this one. So I thought, right, I know what I'll do. <laughs> oh, let's do that one. No, let's do that one. So so now we're going to do the other crown. Remember, we did two, didn't we? We drew two different ones. So I thought, right, okay, well, I'll use this one as my vehicle to show you how to um, get that lovely liquid gold. So let me just do my overlay for positioning. Right, if that's going to be my, let's have a look. That's going to be bang on center. There's my C. Okay, that's my C there. What, what, what side? All right, so that's where it's got to go then. That's that's where my, my crown is going to go for positioning. Oh, look, a cat. Hang on, have I got anything else on there then? Okay, well, waste not, want not. We're going to use that, aren't we? Low tap masking tape to hold it in place. Okay, are you ready? So now we need to transfer, don't we? So I've got an HB, hubba, and I really could use a sharpener. Now, of course, if <laughs> you ever felt like you're on Groundhog Day, yeah? So, so last weekend, oh, that's a not a good sharpener. Let me see if I can find it. You have a look at my crown <laughs> while I look for my sharpener. 
I tell you for why. Oh, here it is. See if this one's any better. So last weekend, I was on telly for two days, wasn't I, all weekend? Well, and this weekend, one till four, she's back on telly. Happy days, grateful for the opportunity. However, so I've had to empty all the boxes from last weekend. Now I've had to refill all the boxes. So it's like all my favorite sharpeners and bits and pe pencils and that, they're always in the boxes ready to go to TV. And I love having it all ready because you never know what's up the road, do you? You never know what's around the corner. So, and the older I get, the more I want to prepare in advance. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I remember when we were when we were younger, we were going on holiday. My mum, she would start packing her suitcase about a fortnight before we were going on holiday. And I used to think it's a bit premature, Mum, you know. Like two weeks beforehand, the suitcase would be on the on, you know, on the side, and she would start putting her things, putting her things nicely and lovely folded with tissue paper, so you don't have to iron it. And she'd put it all in her suitcase. And I used to think, a fortnight, you know, before you go on holiday, that's ridiculous. I used to pack mine. Grace is even worse than me. I used to pack mine the night before. Still do actually, you know. Um, Gracie, she does it like an hour before they've got to go to the airport. <laughs> She's younger than me. But what I'm finding is the older you get, the, the, the more time you start allowing <laughs> for, for packing and planning, especially when it comes to demonstrations on Crean Craft. Okay. So, so it's all down there. I've got a little tick box. I've tick, 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 tick. Got it all. Um, I'll go through it one more time. Have I got that? Do I need that? I think I've got it already. But just in case, I'd rather have two than none. <laughs> right. So that's why I can never find anything on Thursday nights. But that's okay. Right. So let's have a look. This is the fella we're doing now. And we need a, oh, a groovy guard to hold this in place while I transfer, right? Right, let me think for a minute. So crown first, then C in afterwards, as in the letter C. So I've already, I'm hoping, let me just check. She'd hate to do all this and then it not be right. Yeah, that's good enough. Right, okay. I just need to do this before I can ink it don't I? Right, round we go. Hey, there you go. Our half price sales going through the uh, roof. It really is. We've got a new fella that does the, um, that took over from my brother doing the, um, the groovy production. <laughs> and you know, the thing about the sale is, the, the Clarity half price members sale, the thing about the sale is, it um, is quite unique in that if we can make something if we even if we sell out of it right if we can make it to honor the order then we make it so so we'd we'd warned jen this is the the gentleman that makes the plates for us now makes the groovy plates he's in charge of all the machines so we had said to him brace yourself rodney it gets very very busy in the members half price sale in february which he hasn't had the pleasure of experiencing yet. <laughs> well, so Dave came home this evening and he said he'd had a word with Jen, <laughs> who said, I didn't, I, I know you said it was going to be busy, but I didn't realize you meant that busy. Because, <laughs> of course, it really is, it is very busy. Okay. It is what it is. Bear with us. We're going like, the proverbial clappers at the moment. There you go. So that's our little, that's that one done. And then we need our C. Let us see. This is going to look good. Now, let me see. Ha ha ha. You get it. Right. Hold on a minute. Let me make sure I've got the right C here. I've got two different ones going on. Now that one's not dark enough. So I'm going to go with the one I used before. So 
So if that's sitting on there like that, then that's going to go like there. Right, hang on. Like so. Okay, dog. That'll work. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll start there and there. And we won't go beyond that line. So concentrate, Gray, because you're always doing this. You waffle and then you forget. So I've just got to concentrate that I don't go. Let me just make sure. I've got, I want to get away from the top end. Right, that's it. And then round we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There. So just get that C down. And then we can ink it up. Hmm? So what about you when you go on holiday? Are you like mum? Do you spend a fortnight packing? <laughs> she spend she spends uh, the fortnight before that planning. You know, she decides the fortnight before that what she's actually going to take. Lots of lists with mum. Lots of lists. We may not so much. Lists for the telly, definitely. Holiday never works so well. When we went to Frankfurt, cool, I, I couldn't have, <laughs> I couldn't have packed more. I couldn't pack worse. There's the word I'm looking for. More unintelligently than I did. I looked at the weather report and the weather said, right, it's really cold in Frankfurt. Uh, so, you know what, you take them. But it's like everywhere else. If you don't, if you don't like the weather, just wait a minute because it will change. And so, so we went to Frankfurt. I, because I'd been on the telly the day before, so and then like true to form, I didn't pack until the Sunday night. And when I got there, when I got to the packing thing, I looked at the weather. It was like minus six degrees. I thought, right, okay, it's winter in Frankfurt. So I've taken. Let me just check. I've got the right pen here. Oh one. I've taken only like two really thick woolly jumpers. <laughs> what was I thinking? Right? Two really thick woolly jumpers. <laughs> like I'm talking really thick. I would have paid good money to for someone to throw this at me. <laughs> okay. So three, two. Was it two or three? I was wearing a thick one and I had two more in the suitcase. There you go. <laughs> two coats, two winter coats, just in case. I wanted to look a bit different while I was <laughs> um, weathering the elements. So there I had two coats, three woolly coats and two pairs of jeans and a skirt. Two, and then I thought oh, I'll put a skirt in because it's a business trip. So I put a suede skirt in, right? And then I thought, as I was putting it, I thought, I wonder if I put on some weight and it doesn't fit me anymore. I'll worry about that when I get there. So I put the skirt in. Then I thought, oh, bloody skirt. I need tights. I don't I hate tights. I don't mind woolly tights. <laughs> brown for the brown skirt, black. So two pairs of woolly tights. Can you, are you getting the drift here? how I ended up and then when I got to Frankfurt oh my god so we're in a hall we're in a hall with no air conditioning right and the sun was shining on the roof do you know how hot it got do you have any idea at one point <laughs> I just couldn't I was carrying my coat I was sweating because it was, they were also high neck like polar neck as well of course and in the end, I just threw, <laughs> we were on this French friend. Remember we told you about the French food? We were on this stand and I went, il fait trop chaud. <laughs> I just threw my coat on the floor. I, was like, I can't cope with it. Yeah, it was too much. Il fait trop chaud, I said. <laughs> it's too hot. Yeah, so that was me packing like an idiot for our business trip to Frankfurt. Yeah. And then, and then, as you know, we <laughs> we ended up at the wrong airport. But that's a whole other kettle of cod. <laughs> right, come on, let's get. We'll never get the gold done if we don't get this crown in. Shall I come in a bit closer? Come on, then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
I nearly missed the chair then. Oh, that would have been a Kodak moment. Right. So, yeah, packed all the wrong clobber. <laughs> Silly, honestly. And I don't want to buy any more because I told you I'm not buying any new clothes this year. I've decided I'm not going to. I'm going to wear what I've got. But, but, I <laughs> but I do have to take it with me. There is that. There is that. You do have to actually pack. And there was no way, uh, 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 no way I was going to start buying more clothes in Frankfurt because I didn't have the, the, the wherewithal to pack the right gear. So I just sweated bullets. <laughs> I did as well. Oh, and then shoe wear. Should we talk about shoe wear? How wrong that went as well. So on the first day, because you do walk when you do these shows. Oh, my God, do you walk, right? So these halls, they go on for miles. And you know, don't you? So you're wearing your com what you think are your comfy boots, right? And I was. I was. They were definitely my sensible boots. But then all of a sudden, they started to hurt at the, at the heel. And I thought, oh, no, I don't know. This is day one. This is day one, friends. We've got another four days of this. And you don't want to wreck your heels on day one when you're averaging about 20,000, I am kid you not, at 20,000 steps a day in these halls. Just walking, walking, walking. So I thought, as soon as it started to hurt the back, and then I realized it wasn't the boots, it was the sock. It was the thick woolly socks that I decided to wear. <laughs> You'd have thought I was going to Alaska the way I told her. And then I, and I remember saying to Dave in the car on the way to the airport, I can't believe I didn't bring a hat, I said to him. I didn't bring a woolly hat. He said, I think you'll be all right. <laughs> but I did have woolly socks. Yeah, so all in all, I may have to, I may have to rethink my strategy for packing when going on a business trip. Yeah. <laughs> Grace says, <laughs> have you written that on the, <laughs> have you written that, Grace, or are you just telling me that? Gracie's written me a text. <laughs> have you actually written that on the, on the, no, just to you. Right, I'm going to read you what my daughter, she says, my issue is that I pack knickers like I'm going to wet myself five times a day for every day of the trip. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't do that, Grace. No, one a day and one just in case. <laughs> You could be a stand-up comic, missus. <laughs> well, Grace just went to New Zealand, didn't you, pet? <laughs> for how long? 14 days or something, wasn't it? Or 10? How many days did you go for? So that, according to your calculation, you must have had a suitcase just full of knickers. <laughs> For two weeks, <laughs> she says. I'm now. I'm trying to work out how many pairs of knickers she took. <laughs> Is anybody doing this with me, or am I the only clown doing this? She says she packed six weeks worth of knickers. <laughs> oh dear. Is anybody doing this? Is it just me, clowning about? I enjoy our Thursday evenings doing this, though. Don't you? I think it's fun. And um, it's, it, do you know what it is? It's, it's also, apart from being creative, 
it's also a massive distraction, isn't it? You know, whatever's going on in your life. You just leave it, don't you? For a little while, just for an hour or so. Just walk away from it and do something light. It's experiencing that, isn't it? Just doing something light that doesn't, it doesn't bring you down, you know? It's that lightness. And because we're, because I'm drawing this c c crown, <laughs> I've got to concentrate. And that's the thing, I think. When you're concentrating, even on something this simple, you do have to focus to keep it straight, don't you? There you go. That'll do. Once well, so we've done that. Now, now for the gold. So I want to show you something. So I, I did, I did a little bit of research. If I only spent as much time on packing my suitcases as I did on this gold crown, we wouldn't have had the fiasco that we had <laughs> in Frankfurt. Okay, but it's okay. I, I decided that we wanted to look at all different ways of how to do gold crowns, right? How to get a proper gold. So I, I looked at different possibilities and one of them was like a gold pencil, right? So this, the, the polychromes, there's always various ways to do something. So I can tell you hand on heart, we've done this one before. These polychromos, you know, that set of 12 pencils, that really does come up nice and gold too, see? Defo. Um, so you could do that if you wanted to, but this is a different, this is next level gold. You can see the difference, can't you? Like, come on, hello. This is me trying to show you there is another level. But if you wanted to do nice and clean, no problem, then that gold pencil is great and you've got a silver one in there and you've got a, a, um, a copper, is it copper or bronze? What have we got there? What have we here? Barber Castell, copper. Got copper in there. Got a couple of blending pens to smooth it out. Oh, that's where they are. I'm going to need them in a minute. Okay, so, but then I thought, oh, hang on a minute. Let's try something different. So I've got my mix mat out. Right, no, first of all, I've got my big, my big black, remember I said with Posca pen. So we've got a silver one as well. Silver, then we've got white. These are the fat ones. So I've got my mix mat. I'm going to put a piece of white card behind it so you can see what we're actually up to here. Right, and I'll show you. Ein Moment, bitte. Okay. Right, a bit of card behind there so you can see what we're up to. That's better. So you could take this pen. This is the Posca one. Get it going. These are great, honestly. Let's have a look. So you can see it's it's it works and it works really nicely on white. Look, there you go. So if I use it, I can use it like so, like a graffiti pen. Look, and I can get a really good when that dries, that will dry lovely, right? Really nice. Trust it will dry. But what I found was when it dried, look, I'll show you. If we just leave that like that, let's pretend we're colouring in. Let's leave that like that. And let's pretend we're colouring in our crown. Okay. When it dries, it, it, it dries. You can put a second layer on it and then it gets golder for sure. But I want to show you something that I figured out. If you, let's just leave that there so you see how it, it dries. Because it's not like that. It doesn't dry like that. I've, I've worked out a trick. If you take, oh, hey, there you go. There's the trick. <laughs> oh, right. You put, it's a good job. This was the trick, actually. <laughs> All right. Now you know why we don't go directly to our artwork. <laughs> what we're going to do is use, this is lovely. This is exactly what I want, but it's a little bit extreme. Okay. No half measures. 
that flooded, didn't it? Right. So what you're going to do, you see, is use your mix mat. I've got too much on there. But you watch when you, let's do the C. Let's just do the C. And you'll see, <laughs> if you pardon the expression, when you paint with this, right, you get the most deluxe gold, like really beautiful. And one of the things, if you go over the line, don't give it a second thought because you can add it again afterwards. You really can, right? But one of the best things like that I'm use, I use it all the time when I'm not live, if you like, when I'm painting or doing my thing, when I'm being arty, right? This paintbrush is what is worth investing in if you, or you may have a good number six sable hair paintbrush. Okay, we don't, oh, just went over the line a bit. That's okay. If you use a number six, you'll see this is going to look really like gold luster. I've just got to go slower. That's why I'm right. But what you'll find is that a number six paintbrush, sable hair, the one that we, we sell, right? It's, it's got a f fantastic point. So what that means is you can go into the tiniest point like that. And then when you press harder, it gets, f see, see what I'm doing? So you can get into the tiny, the tiny angle like that. And even if you, you don't, you can use the super fine, well, you don't need to, trust me, you, it will just work. There you go. That was a little bit extreme on the splodge. <laughs> I, could, I could paint about 10 crowns with what I've got here. But what's lovely, it's, it is literally like liquid gold. And once it's dry as well, you can, if you've gone over, like I went over a little bit here on the, on the, if you've gone over the edge, you can go back in and just add it. There you go. See, and you can go back over it as well. So now I can, I'm going to use my number six pen to get in tighter, but I'm also going to use my Dame Edna's so I can actually see because my eyesight is not what it used to be. So where I thought I was really close to that line, there you go. See, but you'll, you'll be amazed at how gold you get. We used to, years ago, we used to sell Krylon. Do you remember the Krylon pens? And they were actually gold, gold leafing pens, weren't they? They were actually gold, like carrot gold. Do you remember? They weren't, they were expensive as well. And, um, but they, they were the only thing that I felt that you could get a really fantastic gold leaf because that's what they were. And what I'm finding is with these, let me see if I can come up tight to show you. I'm not very good at this, am I? There you go. It's not quite dry yet, but you can see if you want gold, this is as close to the Posca pens as you're going to get. I'll bring that in. And they're also... If I add a bit of water, that will loosen that up again, just so you know. It's not wasted. But the other thing is, it's this number six sable hair brush. See, because it's so, it's such a, I don't know if you can see this. Let me put it on the black. It's such a pointed brush, right, that you can get into the tightest spot because it's, it's, it's a pointed one. So it's really nice for this kind of work. There you go. So I can just hold that in there like that and then run through there like so. And I'll tell you what, if you were looking for something to distract you, just for a little while, this is a wonderful way to go.
So there you go, we've done our C. And now we'll do our crown. Are we all right with this? Hey, eh? let's have a look, get into our crown. Okay. So you can, now let me show you the difference because now, let me put that flooded piece of artwork there. But let me show you, if you see where I went with the brush, where I actually used the nib, which is what you would normally do, isn't it? But you see, there's the nib. And now look at the difference between that and where I've painted it. No comparison. Do you see? I'm just saying. Very different application. And normally you would you would go that route, wouldn't you? And all I'm saying is don't go the mix mat route with your with your number six sable hair or a good paint. It doesn't have to be this one. It can be any any one. Right. Give it a go. Thing about this is it hasn't got all the stray bristles. It's a good one. Okay, that's what I rest my case. Right, so now we're getting a little bit more detailed here. So let's have a look. Let's get it going. Nice. And and like I say, if you go over the line, it doesn't matter. But it's a really good way to go. You know those Bowob papers that are black and white? Um, this is a fantastic way to add the gold luster to those Bowob papers if you want to do that. And the other thing to do as well, this might be something to think about, if you wanted to, if you were a bit wobbly, say you think, oh, there's no way I could do that. I haven't got a hand that steady. Well, all right then. Got another idea then, because there's always a way. What you could do instead, okay, you could leave it as pencil, then colour it in with the paint it with the gold, like I am now, right? I've got to do it like I, I've done it this way around so that you can actually see something. But for example, I would probably just stick to the pencil line, okay. And then, and then put the black in afterwards. But I'm just going to I'm going to touch up the black. But it looks good, and it doesn't take long, really. And the other thing is, it's distraction, friends. Okay, it's going to look good. And and it gives while I'm doing the crown, it's giving the sea time to to dry, sea. Because then. We're going to put our shadow in. See, I, that's the other thing is, look, I can go over it with the pencils and create that 3D effect. Do you see? On the actual crown itself. So if I go into that camera now there, let's have a look and see if you can see what it looks like. There, you see how you make it look three-dimensional? But I've, I've gone in with pencil on the top over the gold as well. So it looks like it's got a proper... Depth, yeah, nice. Okay, yeah. So if this takes a little while, that's fine too. Hmm. Huh? Did you have anything else lined up today? <laughs> I love doing this stuff. I really do. I, I, I'm I'm in my element when I'm up here doing artwork or, you know, and I've got the joy back in it as well. I did lose it a little bit because it, it was just too much. Um, all I was ever doing was um, doing artwork f for commercial reasons, you know, like to sell stamps. So I have to do the artwork and you've got to kind of perform a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Um, and since we've started doing the shack, that's I've been it's much nicer for me now because I feel I do art because I, I just enjoy it and I know that it's somebody's benefiting from it and it's not just you know churning out demos that are five minutes long to sell something. It, 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 you, you know it, it, that's quite um, I wouldn't say it's tedious. But it's, 
it, it it's not as creative as as just art for art's sake. Do you, do you know what I'm getting at? I think you do. I'm sure you do. Now I wonder, because we've only got those gems there, we've got that one there, but that doesn't matter. We could do a cracking crown. Do we want to add a few more? We could always do it over the top of the gold, Gray. Answered your own question. Let's get that gold in. Let's make this a beautiful gold crown. There. There you go. Yeah, I really, I'm really happy nowadays because, I, I don't know. And Gracie, she often hits a nail on the head and so does Dave. When I say, oh, it's always just so commercialised what we do, you know. And then Dave and Grace both say, independently of one another, well, not, not, you don't, you don't, you don't understand that that what we do you know we it's not just we, we make things and yeah sure we sell things but look at the look at the the goodness it's a good thing it's a positive thing you know you you spend your life you know you don't just flog it you show people what to do with it and there's something in that and you you've built a community around that and there's you know, that's a very good thing. It's a positive thing. It's not just churning out art for the sake of it. And and I thought, you know, I have to take that on board, really. I have to take that on board, you know. I get that. I get that. And, um, And I think there's never been, it's never been more important to, to sort of get together and craft and keep each other company and keep each other sane. Because I, I, I'm just, a, honestly, I'm just, and I'm not saying this for effect, I'm just an average woman, you know, uh, there's, I'm not special and different. And if I need this, this kind of um, company, if I need to know that I belong to something more than just me, you know, then I'm pretty certain that uh, so do you, you know, that you also feel the need to to belong, to be one of the shackers, you know, I mean, I'm not saying we're tribal, but it is important, isn't it? In our own little way, that you belong to a to an to a, a safe group, especially like now, you know, in the evenings, no one wants to go out in in this weather. No one wants to. Go down the club in the rain and in the dark and in the cold, you know. So isn't it, aren't we lucky that we could just flick the switch and go, here they are. Oh, went over the line. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, I think that's really cool. You just switch, switch on and you're there and all your mates are there. You can chat away among yourselves while I fiddle with this gold paint. But it'd be lovely when it's done, you know. It don't take long, does it? That's the thing about us doodlers. We always want instant results, don't we? We always want it to look absolutely amazing immediately. Some things just take a little longer. But I, I tell you what, this gold, to apply it like this, is really quite something, isn't it? And it, I'm just using stencil card, but I've tried it on watercolor paper, amazing. I've tried it on glossy paper, dries beautifully, and really glossy, glossy metallic. So, you know, but it seems to change consistency or its properties when you brush it on when you actually use a brush. 
And I'll tell you another thing, right? This is really good practice for us pencil people. So, so if you're, you're like me, you're a pencil person, you'll know exactly what I mean. When I've got a pencil in my hand, I've always got loads of control. I know exactly, you know, that's why colouring in is, is something really... Uh, is that a comfortable pair of slippers for me, colouring in? Oh, I'll tell you what, on that note, you know that floral alphabet that of, of, of ours that I drew a couple of years ago? It's really nice. Like a, it's phonic, so it's like allium, bougainvillea, la 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 la. Um, well, we've just turned it into a poster. It's really lovely. It's a big A3 poster, but it's um, but it's it's black and white. It's it's for colouring in, right? And I thought it would be really lovely, like a passion project, you know, um, just just to sit and colour in this glorious poster, this alphabet of of letters because they are pretty. Um, so I, I know that Li Lisa's gone into. She sent me a couple of samples to see what I thought, and I said, absolutely perfect. Size is lovely, quite detailed, be quite, you know, quite a challenge to, you know, lots of sharpening that pencil. But I think that that will be really something, that will be something that I want to frame and put on the wall, you know. And, yeah, you could chop them up and turn them into toppers if you feel like it, but it looks so nice. So I, I, I'm, I'm sure that we've done it for a reason. I'm sure that they're, they're either going on the telly or we'll do it directly. But anyway, very, very lovely. Very lovely. Um, so I'll let you know when they're, that when they're available. Yeah. And, uh, and then other than that, colouring in. Do you remember when it was, a, it was really... Um, let me just take a tiny bit of water and just revert. So I've got some water here, just in case you're wondering what I'm using. So I've got a bit of water, see? Look at that. Now, I'll tell you another thing, right? <laughs> just say it. But if I put that in a spritzer bottle, look at that metallic. I'm not going to waste that. See, I'm going to build that up, that gold there. And if I put that in, see the mica in there? Look, that would make a beautiful shimmer. Right, top tip, top tip. If, you've, if you're using water, use a little less. I went a little bit mad on the water here because it's always after the fact you realise it. But if, you're, if you use half as much water as I did and then as you're cleaning your brush, you get that lovely shimmer and then if you put that in a spritzer bottle, that would make a, a love. You know, like water spritzer when we add a bit of water to... Um, like when we're spritzing, when we use the distress oxides in that, that would give your work a really beautiful luster. I know it would. I know it would. So have a think about that. Have a think about that. I've, I mean, I'd have to keep going now with this for about a lot more applications because there's, there's too much water in it. But I would get a lovely luster, no, no doubt about it. But you can see how the water is rejuvenating the ink the um the gold that started to dry up yeah there you go grace has just sent me a nice message from caroline she says barbara your input has changed my view of painting and creating for the sake of it no judgment life changing oh that's so so interesting that you would say that because I, I feel exactly the same. You know, I, I, what is it? The, why do we worry about what people, what people think of our art? They're, you know, that's for the critics. That's their opinion. And opinions are like noses. Everybody's got one, you know, but why do we want people's approval? You know, if, if I do something and I think it's lovely, then surely... Isn't that good enough? Isn't that good enough? Why do we like we're like children? We scamper to our to our to our friends or our family or our husbands or our wives and, and we ask them, what do you think? Do you like this? And then if they say, Neh, 
you're crushed. <laughs> so the clue is, one, you need to own it. Do you remember we went through a phase in the shack and we, we were like, own your art, own your art. It's your art. Sign it. Do you remember we went through that whole signing thing? Own it, sign it. It's yours. It's yours. And, and like Caroline says, this is like next level in as much as you're, in, you're loving the process. See, this is it. It's all about the process, isn't it? It's not just, it's not just about the finished card that we're churning out cards at, at all. It's, that's the opposite. It's about that feeling of doing the job and then with a bit of practice, even doing it well, you know. Do I need approval? No. No, I don't need approval anymore, you know. I look at it. I think, yeah, either I, if I know it's, if it, if I think it's rubbish, then, then I think it's rubbish. But I don't go, I have to keep looking and asking people until somebody says, no, it's lovely. It's what I think is what I'm saying. It's what I think that's important, you know. And while people are deciding or judging, I could be on to the next thing. I could be doing the next thing, you know. Of course, it's lovely when people pat you on the back and say it's great and and my goodness that's what this that's what that's what we do we build each other up we give each other confidence but but believe you me you know your competence level is your competence level comparison is the robber of joy if if i compare my work with somebody else's then i'm doing I'm doing myself a disservice, really. You know, I say, well, I like what I did with that stamp. And then I look at somebody else and I think, oh, that's much better than what I did. Well, that's her work. It's not my work. <laughs> you know? No, no, no. What you have to do is look at her work and go, my word, that is amazing. How did you do it? Teach me. Show me. I want to be able to do that. What do I have to do in order to do that? You know, I can remember, I can remember Dave and I, we went to a um, a pottery, it's called Potfest, a couple of years ago. And we went to a, um, a ceramic festival. See, so now I can go in with a slightly diluted brush and I can go back over the top go straight over the line, <laughs> but this smooths it out, makes it really glossy, okay? This is where you, you go over with a slightly di diluted brush. I mean, don't get me wrong, you don't hose it down, but you'll know, you'll get the consistency, and you can see it, you, you, you know, you just try it on a bit of scrap and think, yep, that is going to smooth this over beautifully, right? But I remember we went to this pop fest. Anyway, so that's what you do next level to get the difference between, let me just show you, between that one and that one. If I show you, this one hasn't dried perfectly, and that one has got another layer of the slightly diluted, the mop-up, over the top, just smoothing it back, okay? Yes, yeah, so we went to the pop fest, and that'll do. And... Um, of course, there were rows and tents and the, the, the art was just staggering, just amazing, okay? And I just, I didn't have the right head on. And I walked around and all I could see was not the beauty that I was looking at, but all I could see was my own inadequacy, you know? And by the time we'd done one ten, I wanted to leave. I really did, because all I felt was, I'm rubbish. I'm nowhere near this calibre. There aren't enough years in my life to ever get as good as that. That's how I was. And I was just moping, like so bloody selfish, you know. And then Dave pulled me up sharp. And he said, yeah, but it's not about you, is it? <laughs> I thought, is it? <laughs> and he went, no. He said, your artwork's great. Your, your pottery's great. He said, these people, are, these people have been doing it longer. 
this is down the road for you. This is their moment. This is their time. This, you're an onlooker. You're not center stage today, Barbara. You're an onlooker. And this is not about your art. It's about their art. And it's about us admiring and respecting their skill and their, their level of expertise. And I needed that kick up the arse. And honestly, I, I was so grateful to Dave, you know, because it was like we had a coffee and it was just a little little knock. He's not he's not usually that kind of severe, but and he wasn't severe. David severe and Dave don't they don't really mix. But but he you know he said, well, it's not it's not about you, is it? And I thought I'm really glad. And then I and then you know and then I I, I I've logged that. Julie noted right because the next time we go somewhere and there's an amazing guitarist and Dave says, oh, I'm rubbish compared to him. I'll say, yeah. Well, it's not about you, is it, Mr. Rowe? <laughs> Julie noted. But he's absolutely right, you know. And comparison is, the, is the, the robber of joy, you know. You start comparing your work with your neighbours or your garden. I can look at my garden and go, like there's a house up the road, beautiful, manicured, whiteboard, it looks like um, it doesn't look like as as has got moss on it and looks a bit not derelict, but definitely in in need of a, a lick of white paint. Let's say that. And every time we drive past the manicured one, I think they must have gardeners because <laughs> their garden looks like a bowling green, right? And then, I thought, and then I have to give myself a kick up the bum again because I think, well, hang on a minute, you have no idea what's going on in that house. Just because they've, they're white, their their windows are clean, and their garden is wonderful, and they've got this amazing property with a lovely. What's that got to do with anything? He could, the husband could be a raging, abusive, violent. You know, she could be out in the garden weeding manically because she's too frightened to go in the kitchen. What do I know? It's none of my business. It's her garden. It's my art. It's your art. She's got, you know what I'm saying? Live and let live. I don't know where all that came from. But I do have to talk to myself sometimes because my head can be so stupid, you know. And then I think, oh, hang on a minute, Barbara, what, what are you on? What are you talking about? <laughs> now let's have a look so once this is dry you see then i can go back in then i can go back in with my pen see and where i've gone over the edge like that you watch you just go straight back over and reintroduce the line so anywhere where i've missed a line I just go straight back in and reintroduce it. See? And I can reinforce it. I can, I've got the wrong glasses on. I can't hardly see the lines. <laughs> there you go. So you go in, you want a bit of shadow because you just went too far like that. So I've got a real good shadow on there now. Well, hey, that looks like, so now I've created a hole rather than a gem. But I don't care about that because I can tell you now it's about the process. You go with what you got, you know. That's another thing. Don't you find if you're going in with a preconceived idea of what you're going to make, I mean, it's, it's all right to have a plan. I get all that. But if you, if you go off piste, as they say, right, and, and it doesn't quite go the way you wanted it to, okay, well, you're not going to throw it away and go, you just go with it, don't you? You go with it. You don't, you don't say, oh, right, bin it, go again, go again, go again, because if you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. And the only way to really evolve creatively is to go with what you've got. If it goes off to that angle, go, oh, Oh, embrace that. Don't get frustrated and think, oh, I didn't want it to do that. It wasn't supposed to do that. It was supposed to do that. Then go, oh, all right then. Mm, the universe is sending me on a different path, right? And go off on that path and enjoy the journey. 
that's what it's all about. Anyway, enough waffle. Um, on Monday, when we get together, look, I've gone right over the edge there. I'll have to put another. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, on Monday, when we get together at 10 o'clock, don't forget, first of all, on Sunday, I'm on at one o'clock and four o'clock. Actually, on the subject to telly, did you see Jane today? Uh, Jane Telford, didn't she do a cracking job? I tell you what, she's a natural on telly. She really is. Deborah Wheeler and, and Jane Telford absolutely smashing it out of the ballpark. Yeah, she did a really good job, Jane, today. So hopefully she got home safe and sound. And um, it's so lovely to see people evolve like that. You know, there's another one. You know, if I'd said to her 15 years ago, tell you what, Jane, you're going to be on telly one day, she'd have laughed at me. In your dreams, she'd have said. I remember the day I met her as if it was yesterday at Harrogate. You know, I remember. And I, and I just think, or was it Doncaster? I just remember. And I remember, you know, I love Jane. She's a good woman. But I do know that if I'd said to her 15 years ago, you'll be on telly soon. <laughs> she was not near Nelly, right? Funny, isn't it? So, so it's lovely to watch people evolve and grow and 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 get better and better. But there's that that's not by luck. I wouldn't like to imagine how many thousands and thousands of hours Jane Telford has invested in her art, you know. And, and I remember going around their house once and I went to see Colin and her. And, and I, I, I couldn't believe it. She does all her art on her dining room table. They still eat at the table. So she, she literally uses half the dining room table. All that work, all that art, whether it's stamping or groovy or parchment, whatever it is, it all comes off an area that is, is three foot by three foot. Yeah. It's insane, you know, to me. I've got rooms. I've got studios. I've got the three-bay garage, the top floor. I've got a, the same again in uh, clarity. And I still haven't got enough room. See, it doesn't, it's got nothing to do with that. It's got nothing to do with that. It's all a, it's an inside job. It's what goes on up here. Amazing, you know, because people say, oh, I wish I had a room like yours. Well, Jane Telford who's one of the most talented designers I know and crafters. She does everything that she does off a corner of her dining room table. <laughs> Amazing. So it's not what you got, it's how you use it. <laughs> and on that note, I shall love you and leave you. Grace, thank you. What about the mud pit opposite you, Bob? No, I don't want a garden like that. I'm waiting for that to turn into a swimming pool, Ken. <laughs> listen it's eight o'clock i'm gonna go and find my husband and the cats lots of love to you thank you for joining me and um and i'll see you on monday at 10 o'clock and we are going to have a session on gemstones and i've got a sunday to bone up on it so to speak all right lots of love have a lovely evening bye guys and thanks grace mm -hmm. oh i can't what's that